I'm Dr. Raymond Douglas. I'm an orbital surgeon here in Los Angeles, and my pleasure speaking to Dr. Babak Larian, who's a thyroid surgeon here in Los Angeles in the Beverly Hills area. Today, what we'd like to discuss a little bit is questions about thyroid antibodies. This is a very common question for Graves patients and patients with thyroid eye disease, and I know that there's a lot of confusion. Um, First of all, I'm going to let Dr. Larian introduce a little bit about what thyroid antibodies are and as they attack the thyroid in general. I deal with antibodies that attack what's called the TSH receptor a little bit more, called thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins, and these are seen in Graves patients, and they actually can cause hyperthyroidism. But there are a variety of other antibodies that we deal with on a daily basis, and I'll let you elaborate just a little bit. You know, in addition to the TSI, there's also a thyroid peroxidase antibody. <clears throat> this is an antibody that the immune system creates that attacks portions of the thyroid gland. And the disease it causes is called thyroiditis or Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And that means the, the antibodies cause inflammation in the thyroid gland. The immune system essentially attacks the thyroid gland. And at first, the thyroid gland gets inflamed and swollen, and you may have a surge of hormones coming out of the gland. So in the initial phase, there's an increase in thyroid hormone levels. And then over time, the thyroid fatigues and starts producing less and less and less hormones. And because there's chronic inflammation, that inflammation and irritation that it causes can create nodules and tumors in the thyroid gland. And it also increases the chances of producing thyroid cancer, uh, lymphomas in the thyroid gland. And so it requires monitoring, not only to check for hormone levels, but also to make sure there's nothing developing in the thyroid gland. Yeah. Patients often ask me as far as thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins or the antibodies that attack the thyroid receptor and cause activation, whether that's related to the disease activity in their eyes. And I would describe it more as a vaccination. Your immune system has been vaccinated to this receptor, and it can make these antibodies for a very long period of time. In fact, I can sometimes see them for five or six years in patients. And sometimes if there's a big spike in the antibody level, that may mean that they have some active immune process going on. But typically, that doesn't influence surgery for the eye disease. Do these antibody levels ever influence surgery for the thyroid disease? You know, not in and of themselves, but if, they, if there is a surge in the antibody and your thyroid gland is producing a huge amount of thyroid hormone, then that thyroid hormone level has to be controlled. And also, you have to take beta blockers to control the heart rate, the rap, excuse me, the rapid heart rate that occurs. So it's controlling the hormone levels that's a consequence of it that's important in the setting of surgery. I agree. Many patients are very diligent about checking their antibody levels, and many physicians are too. For me, as far as influencing surgery on the eye disease or how their course is going to progress for the eye symptoms, it's typically not very helpful or related, but they undergo a lot of testing that seems to be needless. Right. We're going to have future segments coming up about thyroid hormone treatment in addition to radioactive iodine and thyroidectomy.